Hi everyone, I'm Santi. Um, this is my first conference, so I'm pretty excited. Uh, so a little bit, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a software developer at Dwa. We are uh, we're in the business of using of automating regulation, and we use Clojure for that. So if that sounds interesting to you, uh, come and find me afterwards. I'm also the, an alum of the Recur Center which is a self-directed retreat for programmers. I spent six weeks there last, uh, last summer, uh, and a lot of the initial work on Piggy was done there. Anyway, so on with the talk. So here comes my first controversial statement. Oh, nope, that's not a controversial statement. I'll be talking about three things. Uh, my title, the title of the talk was Piggy, specs for breaking changes, so I'll be talking about these three things in some combination or subset. Anyway, first, controversial statement. Breaking changes are bad. Uh, no good, no one likes them, they're a big oof. Luckily, in 2016, Rich Hickey gave us some vocabulary to talk about changes. Uh, changes can be uh, summarized in uh, this following table. If you want uh, the rest of the convert, uh, more context around it, uh, please watch that talk. But he broke it down in uh, these ways. Either you're breaking someone if you're requiring more, you're asking more from your consumer. Uh, in this case, if you think of functions, you're asking more of the arguments. Uh, that could be a change of parity, other stuff, or you can also break them by providing less. So you promise them one thing, but now you're uh, giving them less of that. That's a break and change. Uh, the other directions are totally fine. Those can be, uh, those are captured as accretion and relaxation. Uh, you could relax your requirements. You could say, um, before I only wanted two, arguments, now I could take variadic. That's totally fine change, because you didn't change what it meant to take two arguments. And if you provide more, that's totally fine, because as long as the, uh, the consumer knows how to, uh, what you provide them is the same, they know how to read that, it's totally cool. The, these aren't new ideas. Uh, they've been talked about before. There's something called the robustness principle. When John Postel talked about the TCP specification, uh, be conservative in what you do, be liberal in what you accept from others. This is often uh, summarized as be conservative in what you uh, send and be liberal in what you uh, take in. This is also the Liskov substitution principle, where there are preconditions, postconditions, and variants on, uh, on a function. Uh, preconditions, you can't strengthen in the subtype. You can't uh, require more from them. Uh, force conditions, you can't make it more general. Second controversial statement, spec is cool. It addresses these issues in a fun way. Uh, it does a lot of things. I've listed them all here. But for this talk, I'll just focus on two things. Validation and automatic generative testing. So how do we do validation in spec? Well, it's the same way we do validation in the rest of Clojure, uh, predicates. Uh, as long as you give some truthy value, you could use uh, you could use specs, and they tell you a lot. You could describe arbitrary relationships between uh, of your data. As uh, in this case, it's greater than five. It's not a type, but just an arbitrary relationship. The second part is generative testing. Uh, we most, in Clojure, we mostly accomplish this through a quick check style library called test check, where instead of 
you're uh, doing example-based test where you're doing exhaustive uh, inputs and outputs, you write properties that are true for all, all, uh, all cases. And the cool part about these quick check style libraries is they shrink to the smallest failing case. So if you had a large data structure, um, it would continuously shrink it down to something that's more manageable. And that's useful for this randomly generated data. Spec introduced two namespaces, spec closure spec gen and closure spec test, which help uh, with the test check. Mainly that the idea is writing properties is hard, but you could write specs and you can infer the properties from these specs. Going back to what I was talking about earlier with compatibility, um, an F spec uh, defines spec on functions, and these are the same things we were talking about. Inputs are the preconditions, a return is the postcondition, and you also have this arbitrary uh, FN keyword that captures a relationship between return and arguments. Uh, these specs don't have to, you don't have to spec every function you have. You could use them at the boundaries. Uh, you can make them as useful as they are to you, which is pretty nice. So, I, I went to the first two things, uh, break and changes and spec. So what is this piggy? Uh, most closure conferences or talks, they have a good uh, definition. I, I don't, so that's not great. But I have the next best thing, which is a quote from a book, an old book. <laughs> uh, so simply, what is Piggy? It's a closure I that helps with broken specs. <laughs> the way Piggy accomplish, accomplish, uh, accomplishes all of this is it just makes combinators. Um, writing specs are hard. Uh, you know more, if you write a spec, you know more about it than I would as a library writer. So if I just focus on how to combine it, how to glue all your parts together and get them in the right place, uh, it's a big win. It's less work for me and it's more, uh, it could work with more things. So Piggy defines two, uh, two combinators. Uh, compat and f compat. This is a typo. What, compat is over simple specs, so simple predicates, while f compat is over function specs. And it accomplished this by being a spec itself. It implements something called the spec protocol, which, if you implement these one, two, three, four, five, six functions, um, you could call yourself a spec and work with all the tooling that spec offers. Uh, and an ecosystem has blossomed despite spec being alpha. Uh, we have tons of libraries, expound, spec monster, orchestra, speculative, refund.web, uh, spec tools, phrase, and they all work together because of a common interface or protocol. Okay, so let me just go through this is pretty dangerous. This is a REPL part of the talk. Uh, so let's say we wanted to spec a function. Uh, that's a function that most of us know well. Uh, let's say plus. Uh, what do we know about plus? Pretty simply, I could add two numbers. Cool. Two plus two is four. Sounds great. Uh, let's write a spec for that. So, naively, I could do f spec. It takes arguments. Uh, this is a concatenation. This followed by this. So, let's just say there's an x, that's an int, and a y, that's an int. And it returns an int. Uh, this is a spec. I could all, now I could check the spec if it conforms. 
So most of the time, you check your F specs by doing, uh, by calling test check. Uh, F spec is kind of cool that inside its conform is a tiny uh, call to quick check. Oh, sorry, to test, oops, test check slash quick check. So you could call conform on this F spec, uh, call it on the function you want, and it'll run and give you the same function. If, if it conforms, it'll give you the same function back. So let's say I gave it another function like uh, int invalid. So, and I could call explain on it to see a little more about that. Wrong number of arguments, passed to int. Cool. Uh, so I'll just use explain because it gives nice error messages uh, to the side. Okay, so this is a pretty good F spec uh, for plus. But maybe we thought a little harder about it and realized, oh wait, plus is variadic. Uh, I could do this, I could do this. Uh, what other tricks can I do? <laughs> Yeah, range 10, oops, yeah. So I could update my spec. I realize it's not a, just an X and Y, it's a cleaning star of int. So let's see how this goes and update our function. Oh, whoa, integer overflow. Um, so it didn't catch that before, I guess, because the, gener the values generated from the ints weren't big enough. But now it's very attic, it hits it easily. Cool, so now we realize we got it wrong. It's not ints. Um, actually, there's a weirder thing. You would think this would uh, auto-promote the into like a big int or something. Turns out plus doesn't do that, but there's a plus quote that does that. Uh, so if you look at the doc string, so yeah, plus quote does arbitrary precision. Learn that by accident. Uh, so let's try it now. Oh, it failed int. Ah, so as we expected, it's not um, our specs right now. So it is auto promoting to larger numbers. And looking at this, I also realized, oh, plus works on all types of numbers, not just ints and big ints, but ratios, floats, oops, negatives, floats, um, let's say that. Nope, that's not something. <laughs> so yeah, so I could just use a more general predicate number, and see where I go. Awesome, success. So this is a good, this is, uh, we're more comfortable with this spec. Can we, but can we see if it's compatible, just for kicks, with our old spec? Uh, the one that looked a little like this. Uh, so Piggy, you could pass these into Piggy. Um, the f compat function, f compat. So this would be our old one. And this would be our new spec. Oops. Um, and so let's see how it works. Oh, interesting. So maybe I'll emphasize that more. 1.0 failed int at return old. So if we look at the re uh, the old return, uh, failed this. So what what was happening? Sorry. This got promoted. 
Oh, even, if, I, if I do this, it would, it would still fail the same way. Um, what's happening here is this is the, uh, this is the strengthening uh, promise. This is the Liskov substitution in play here. You, before you were promising ints, now you're prom promising numbers. You're weakening your promise because uh, now you're saying, oh, I could give you more stuff. It, can only go, uh, it only works the other way around. So if, let's say we, um, for, for, to make it really obvious, what if I, I fix the arguments, right? Arguments are always numbers and I tell you I could return anything. Uh, this is very wrong uh, because, sorry, um, you're saying now that something like space, like char, um, can be returned. Any is less constrained than number. So this is a break and change. Good thing we didn't publish uh, the int function spec before. If we did, then we would have to tell all, all our consumers that uh, fixing the spec was well, going to be a break and change. So cool. Uh, what else? What else would be interesting? So what if I show off other parts of the of uh, how break and changes work? So what if I fix number, the, I fix the return now, and I change the arguments? Um, before I said, I can only give you int and I'll give you a number, and now I said I could take any number. This, sh yeah, okay, this is a success. Um, that works, but if I did it the other way around, or this is fun, I could do this. it would fail because um, you're, you're constraining the arguments uh, further. You're strengthening, you're asking more of the caller that not only had it, has it, does it have to be a number, but it has to be an int too. So cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, cool. Um, did I get through all the things I wanted? Your overflow. Yep. Cool. Um, so this is this is nice, but this is still sort of a toy example. Oops. Mainly, this works because uh, spec did the hard work of providing generators for these base predicates. So uh, the generators are already done for me, uh, made for number, for ints, and other things. So I could um, exercise or use test check effectively. So I was thinking for this talk, what is a useful real world example of a break and change? Um, it turns out that spec itself is an expected break and change. Uh, so far we've been working with, or that's publicly released is spec alpha, uh, closure.spec alpha, uh, dot alpha. And what's in the works is something called closure.spec dash alpha two. It's a new, new, new namespace, so you could continue using uh, closure.spec as before, but if you were to, if you wanted to use all the new goodies in closure, uh, alpha 2, you'd have to, you'd run into some breaking changes, which is expected. And that's fine, I guess. Um, the problem is there, as I mentioned before, there's a ton of great tooling built for closure spec 1. Um, so all that tooling to get all the abilities of spec 2 need to be upgraded and they're gonna have to run into break and changes. So my thinking was using Piggy to test between closure spec, uh, closure, your old closure specs with your new closure two specs. 
And so it acts as sort of a transition tool um, where you know your old specs were working fine, but you want to try this new stuff. How can you um, test across specs? And uh, particularly piggy.combinators alpha 2 supports that. Um, so let's see. I have a pre-example here. So just one of the most, uh, most visible changes between spec one, spec one and spec two is the introduction of uh, schema and select, which kind of uh, captures better the idea of like optionality than the old S keys uh, require and optional. So in this case, we could, for our purposes, um, create a old namespace just so I could alias a bunch of these things. I don't want them to collide with the new specs. Uh, and so I'll, it's, let's see. Yeah, uh, cool. So this old, this key spec said before I required I required unqualified foo bar and now, and also optionally um, require, uh, optionally take in a bass. The new one is very similar. Um, this is alias to uh, spec alpha two, sorry, uh, spec alpha two. So I'm calling into the new spec, doing some stuff. Um, using the new things now, this is how you call and call up uh, new unqualified keys in schemas. Um, you, def you could define it as a, a map with the predicates or the specs. And then select is where you call this uh, optionality, where you, this is where it's effective. So for simple things, I could just call a regular um, compat, take the old, um, take the new, select, and call conform on this map. And yeah, it works. So it, we could see kind of how these, we can explore how uh, how we understood keys pretty well before. How do we use this new thing? We could just run it, uh, run a compatibility test between it to see if they mean the same thing as we thought they did. Um, so similarly, if I, if I require all of them, this is a similar, similar case where I just require also Baz. Oops, oh, did I not reevaluate? Cool, it's invalid. Oops. Yeah, and I get useful error messages. Uh, same as before. Uh, so basically, I'm still working through these ideas. Uh, this work started, or at least this part of Piggy started Saturday, and um, it's still developing. Uh, but it's, I think, a useful idea for how to move forward uh, away from that we're not super afraid of breaking changes. Uh, we can point to exactly where stuff breaks and hopefully have a way to fix them. Uh, yeah, and that's it. <laughs>